G'day. Daryl Ladingo here. I wanted to have a chat with you about what it's like living on Fraser Island since the government took control of things. We dingoes have lived on Fraser Island for over 3,000 years. For most of that time, my ancestors coexisted with the Mutchula people, Aboriginals, who lived here for thousands of years. We'd help the Mutchula people, we'd go hunting with them. Some of us would stay behind to protect the campsite and help protect the kids while the hunters were out hunting and the women were out gathering. They were our friends. We were well fed and life was good. The Bachelor people named the island Kigari, which means paradise. Just so you can get an idea of what it was like, take a look at our island and I'll be back shortly to talk to you. were happening, the bachelor would invite their mates over from the mainland to harvest the bounty. There were sometimes 4,000 aboriginals on the island all hunting fish. And you know, when they caught them, we dingoes ate very well. Kigari was paradise, but one day around 240 years ago, something happened that changed it forever. Captain Cook came sailing past the island, and the bachelor people gathered on Indian Head, watching this strange, floating object. It was Captain Cook who named Indian Head because he saw the Bachelor people watching his ship. It wasn't very long before white people began living in Australia. They discovered that there was clean sand to mine on Kigari, as well as huge, valuable forests of quality timber on the island. The white people called the island Fraser Island, after Captain Fraser and his wife Eliza, who was shipwrecked there. The Bachelor people didn't believe in cutting down trees. In fact, each person had their own totem animal or plant, which they had to watch over during their life. To cut a long story short, a mob of troopers came to the island, claiming there were criminals hiding with the Bachelor. They chased the Bachelor, men, women and children, across the island, and around 1,500 Bachelor ran up Indian Head. Most were massacred by the troopers, but many jumped to their death on the rocks below. The Bachelor that were left were taken to a mission near Cairns, and we dingoes lost our friends the Bachelor. With our mates the Butchula gone, so was a major source of food for us dingoes. The sand mining and tree logging started and the people working on the island gave us food. White people started living on the island and there were campers and fishermen and they gave us food too. Back then there were wild horses roaming the island and during whale season one or two dead whales would wash up on the beach. So we had plenty of food. There was also coconut trees and we dingoes love coconuts. We play with them first, tearing and tugging at the coconut husk until we can get at the nut inside. Sort of our version of dingo soccer. Coconuts have been growing on the island and washing up on the beaches for thousands of years, so we're a part of the ecology of the island. So far, I've been talking to you about the history of dingoes on Fraser Island. This is because I wanted you to know that we dingoes have been fed by humans for thousands of years and that it's always been a part of our existence on the island to be fed by humans. In all that time, you won't find any mention of the island's dingoes attacking, biting or killing a human being. We were well fed and a dingo with a full stomach is a happy dingo. Fraser Island was well heritage listed, so everything on the island is now supposed to be looked after and nurtured by a government department called the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service, who you would think would be looking after the well-being of us dingoes. But the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service now threaten our very existence and it won't be long before we suffer the same fate as our good friends, the Bachala people. In 1998, the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service established the Fraser Island Dingo Management Strategy. 
The horses on the island were gone, and strict laws against feeding us dingoes were introduced. This government department states that we dingoes must be allowed to live in our natural state. The only problem is that the natural state they have in mind is completely different to the one where dingoes have lived for thousands of years. In order to allow us dingoes to live in our natural state, the Parks and Wildlife Rangers ear tagged us. They poisoned us. They shot clay ballots at us. They trap us with soft jaw traps. They put tracking collars on us. And they shoot us dead with real bullets. They put electrical fences right around the tourist resorts and shot dead any dingo living at the resorts. Sox, who lived at Yurong Beach Resort, had a huge hole in his head from him trying to dig out a bullet that had been there for three days. The rangers finally finished him off. And the rangers also fenced off the resort garbage tips because we used to scavenge at them. And now we're pretty much down to ghost crabs and hard shell pippies and the odd lizard we can find. These days, if a dead whale washes up on the beach, the rangers drag it into the dunes and bury soft jawed traps all around the whale, not just one or two, dozens of them. And if we go near the whale, because we're starving, we need something to eat, we get caught in these soft jaw traps. The dingo will struggle violently to get out of a soft jaw trap and can injure its legs struggling for hours before the rangers turn up. More than one dingo has been seen limping 12 months or more after being trapped. The injury prevents the dingo from hunting. It can't run. We dingoes are not without human friends. People of Harvey Bay have established Save the Fraser Island Dingoes and have held fundraisers. People are aware that there's something terribly wrong with the management on Fraser Island. This is Jennifer Parkhurst, the dingo whisperer. Jennifer got to know us a lot and studied us for seven years. Either side of Jennifer are politicians, Ted Sorensen and Paul Neville, prior to their political party, the LNP, being elected. Both are showing support for Jennifer and the plight of us dingoes. During the time Jennifer spent with us dingoes, Jennifer noticed that due to government dingo policy, we dingoes were suffering and dying as a result of the rangers incorrectly attaching ear tags and also due to a lack of available food. Jennifer gathered photographic evidence and delivered a comprehensive presentation to Tracy Jackson of the RSPCA. Tracy Jackson gave the evidence to the government department responsible for the questionable dingo management program. That department promptly raided Jennifer's home and charged her with multiple offences. Jennifer was fined $40,000 for feeding starving dingoes and given a suspended jail sentence by a magistrate who had previously been the coroner for a little boy killed by starving dingoes after the government's management program was put in place. That child might well be alive today if the dingoes had have had adequate food sources. Jennifer was subjected to close scrutiny by Parks and Wildlife Rangers. The department was desperate to silence her. If she went to the island, she was followed, stopped and a vehicle scrutinised. Jennifer had a favourite dingo called Dingo H. A message was left on her home answering machine saying, Dingo H is Ma. That was followed by another anonymous message saying, I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning. Those messages were followed by an anonymous email with a picture of the back of Dingo H's head with a large bullet hole through the skull. An expert who saw the photo felt the gun used was a 45 caliber handgun. So the person stalking and intimidating Jennifer was present at the shooting of Dingo H. Given the evidence, that's the only logical conclusion. You'd also have to assume that in order to own such a gun, that person would have to be a member of a local gun club. Two dingo autopsy reports made public under the Freedom of Information Act also reveal a cowboy-like mentality by a Parks and Wildlife Ranger who shot the two dingoes. The autopsy report signed off by Ranger Merv Brewster states the cause of death on one report as being from rifle-itis and on the other report as being from half an ounce of hot lead. You wouldn't expect to see those statements from someone who is employed to maintain a World Heritage listed environment. Good on you Merv. It is also surprising that these autopsy reports were allowed to be filed in the department's official records. At least two rangers have resigned from the Fraser Island Parks and Wildlife Department, disgusted at the department's policy on dingo management. Ray Revel, who now works at Tess Wildlife Sanctuary in Maryborough, was one of them. The Parks and Wildlife Department on Fraser Island have a shoot and kill policy for any Fraser Island dingo they decide is habituated or a danger to humans. 
Offers to relocate those dingoes to a zoo or sanctuary are ignored. They prefer to shoot them. Ray Revel at Tess and Dingo Simon at Jurong Dingo Sanctuary at Kingaroy both have offered to relocate dingoes instead of killing them. The late Malcolm Douglas was refused a breeding pair of Fraser Island dingoes. Not one Fraser Island dingo has ever made it off Fraser Island alive. The rangers shoot them dead instead. The Fraser Island dingo is the purest strain of dingo on the east coast of Australia, so would find a home easily at any zoo or sanctuary around the world. There's no need for them to be shot. Back when we dingoes lived with the Bachala people, they say that we numbered around 1,000 dingoes. Today, a lot of people feel that there are around 100 dingoes left on the island. The removal of food resources for the island's dingoes included any coconut trees growing on the island. The department said they were not native to Australia. Jennifer Parker has photographed dingoes in bad condition and the people of Harvey Bay started seeing images of thin, starving dingoes with one image of a dingo near death standing in front of a garbage skip bin. A heartbreaking image of it starving to death. This dingo could smell food but couldn't get at it. On every day of the week, dingoes across the island can smell food being cooked at campsites and resorts. If they come to beg, the humans can't feed them, and if they come to beg too often, the rangers will shoot them. Dingo pups are naturally playful and will run up to a human. If the person runs, the dingo pups will run after him. It's hardwired into a dingo to chase something that runs. It's an instinct. The department sees this play behaviour as a threat and will shoot dingoes showing this behaviour, saying that it's an attack. If the human just stood still, the dingo pups would soon lose interest and head off down the beach. Today, descendants of the Bachala people live in Harvey Bay and valuable members of our community. Some of the elders still maintain a presence on Fraser Island at Dilly Village. Bachelor elders living at Dilly Village recently were very vocal and strongly protested when rangers came to kill a young dingo called Inky that the elders regarded as their camp dingo. Notice the shocking damage done to Inky's left ear by the Parks and Wildlife's ear tag. Dingoes hate these ear tags and often tear them out of the ear. The rangers ignored the elders' protests and shot at Inky wounding the young dingo. For three months the wounded Inky eluded the rangers with a bullet wound in its neck. The rangers finally killed Inky. Inky the dingo had playfully nipped a tourist, so the rangers killed Inky. Dingo Simon of Durong Dingo Sanctuary emailed the LNP Minister for the Environment, Andrew Powell, numerous times over the three months Inky dodged the rangers. Dingo Simon offered to come and get Inky at his own expense and to give Inky a home at Jurong Dingo Sanctuary. Minister Andrew Powell delayed replying to Simon until the day after Inky was killed. After being intimidated, harassed and branded a criminal by Queensland Parks and Wildlife, in 2012 Jennifer Parkhurst was awarded the prestigious title of Conservationist of the Year due to her work with the Fraser Island Dingoes. This was awarded by the Australian Wildlife Protection Council and it was a national award. This and local community support make a mockery of Queensland Parks and Wildlife and proves that people have no faith in that department or the state government. Jennifer is still struggling to pay the ridiculous $40,000 fine given to her by a magistrate who should not have even been hearing the case, given his past coronial experience viewing a small child killed by dingoes. No other person convicted of feeding dingoes on Fraser Island has been fined anywhere near $40,000. Fines have ranged from $300 to just over $2,000. You are not allowed to have a campfire on Fraser Island anymore in case they cause a bushfire. For three years in a row, Queensland Parks and Wildlife have conducted supposedly controlled burns, claiming to reduce the threat of bushfire by burning off accumulated dead foliage and wood on the ground. For three years in a row, fires lit by Parks and Wildlife have been out of control, with one of their out of control burn offs resulting in the evacuation of Kingfisher Bay Resort. 
The incompetence of this department manifests itself in almost everything the Fraser Island Parks and Wildlife Service implements on Fraser Island. The only thing missing is cowboy hats, horses, but apparently at least one of the rangers is known to already have the six-shooter. These out-of-control burn-offs destroy dingo natal dens, where dingoes raise their pups. Your tracking collar data can be thrown in the garbage bin too. You now think dingoes regularly roam 100 kilometres, when in actual fact that collared dingo was roaming from the stress of blood-sucking parasites under the six-inch wide leather collar. It couldn't find its own territory because other dingoes chased it away because of the weird thing round its neck. That's why it roamed 100 kilometres. There is one glaringly obvious fact that proves the island's dingoes are not the dangerous animal the government makes them out to be. That is, that the Fraser Island dingo lived with the Pachala people in harmony for thousands of years. Do you honestly think that the Pachala hunters would have tolerated dingoes attacking their children? If the dingoes were dangerous, they would not exist today. The Bachala would have wiped them out. Instead, the Bachala had them living at their campsites. A photo exists on the internet of a Bachala woman allowing two small dingo pups to suckle at her breasts. In the parks and wildlife created environment on Fraser Island, hungry dingoes are always looking for food. With insufficient food, we dingoes, like most animals, including humans, can act in a dangerous manner. When on Fraser Island, parents should keep small children by their side at all times. The LNP government established an independent committee to review the Fraser Island Dingo Management Strategy. From the outset, local conservationists could see that the experts being appointed were not the correct people to be evaluating the situation on Fraser Island. The review panel relied heavily on mainland dingo data and Queensland Parks and Wildlife data, which cannot be trusted. It came as no surprise that the findings of this review basically endorsed parks and wildlife practices. It appears to most that this was not an honest evaluation and the situation on Fraser Island remains the same with dingoes being destroyed on a monthly basis it seems. It is the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service with the support of both Labor and Liberal LNP governments that have created the dangerous environment that we dingoes now have to live in. Any animal starved of food can become a dangerous animal. Humans have been known to eat humans in a starvation situation. By their own records, Parks and Wildlife admit that there have been over 100 attacks or incidents by dingoes since the department took control. This in itself proves it is the department's activities and interference that has caused the incidents. There were no complaints or attacks prior to the government managing Fraser Island. People and dingoes interacted without any problems. The natural state of the Fraser Island dingo is to be fed by humans. History proves this. What exists on Fraser Island today is an unnatural environment created and styled by the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. Any dangerous behaviour by dingoes has been caused by that department. The Fraser Island Dingo Management Scheme is now recognised by qualified conservationists around the world as being a failed management scheme and one of the greatest blunders by any government ever made on the ecology. The LNP needs to get rid of the dingo management and feed the dingoes. If they don't, you will lose us forever. State and federal governments seem to forget that they are elected by the people to reflect the will of the people. You are there to serve. You are not there to do whatever you please. You know what happened to Labor. It can also happen to the LNP. Clive Palmer and Bob Catter are now viable choices. We're all very sick of the arrogance of the major political parties. Looking at everything I've spoken about in this presentation, it is highly obvious that the Fraser Island Dingo Management Strategy is one of extermination. There are no safeguards in place to preserve the gene pool of we Fraser Island dingoes. No breeding pairs in zoos or sanctuaries and the shooting of any dingo regarded as a problem animal. Male and female dingoes from the same parents have been seen to be mating and this is a strong sign our dingo population is in dire trouble. It's easy to stand by and do nothing when you see bad political policy and incompetent government departments destroying your heritage. Thankfully there is a large number of people who object to what is being cruelly done to the dingoes on Fraser Island. As just one person, you can email government, current affairs programs, the World Heritage Organisation and tell everyone you know about the extermination of the island's dingoes.
To those currently criticising parks and wildlife, keep up the good work. To island residents watching rangers' activities, keep taking those photos and video footage. To those that would like to help, write that letter, send those emails. This is your national park. It belongs to the people. And these idiots don't have any right to be doing what they're doing. Wildlife rangers in our national parks used to be there to protect the environment and protect the animals native to the environment. This is Ranger Paul Fishburn happily posing over an already dead dingo that he had shot. The local paper wanted a photo and Paul happily obliged. These rangers enjoy killing the dingoes. I have a message from the remaining dingoes on Fraser Island to Ross Belcher, Andrew Powell, shooters Merv Brewster and Paul Fishburne and Tracy Jackson of the RSPCA. Now where is it? Oh, here it is. You're an absolute disgrace, the lot of you.